Most investors are focused on the latest headlines on the trade war, but our next guest says he is still continuing to see strength in the economy despite the headlines. And joining us now is Ryan Dietrich, LPL Financial Senior Market Strategist. So, Ryan, we are just going over um, Mike Wilson's latest note from Morgan Stanley in our strategy session, and he's been calling out where the data is not looking good. Lower commodity prices, weak earnings from retailers and restaurants, housing stocks, weak job numbers. What do you see that you would say, hey, Mike Wilson, look at this one thing a little bit harder because this convinces me the economy is actually doing okay. Sure. Well, clearly there are definitely some concerns and there's there's some good ones you just mentioned there. But, you know, look at what happened in the first quarter. We had some of the strongest productivity numbers we've seen since 2010. At LPL Research, we just released our mid-year outlook this morning, and one of the key drivers, key themes is productivity can come in as confidence can stay high. Look at bit small business confidence, which really jumped. Consumer confidence really jumped last month. We know the scary headlines out of trade, but there's still confidence coming in. Productivity strong can extend this, which is going to be next week, a 10-year economic cycle of growth for the United States. We still think 5% earnings growth is quite likely for S&P 500 this year, about 2.5% GDP. It's not great. We, we are aware. But what have we seen for 10 years? We go up, then we go down, and everyone gets worried. Everyone gets bearish. You know, we've had less than 30% bulls on the AAII sentiment poll for six weeks in a row. What's that mean? That's the longest since early 2016. We get scared every time we pull back, and that lowers those expectations, and just positive, a little bit of positive news comes in and moves equity markets higher. So that's kind of why we think this cycle will still continue, and there is not a, a likelihood not going to be a recession over the next 12 to 18 months in our view. You know, Ryan, I I wonder sometimes if we're just drawing the lines on the calendar in the wrong places, right? Because if you go back to January 2018, the market hasn't really done a lot over that 18-month period. It's actually been a pretty challenging time uh, for investors overall. Of course, draw the line at the first of this year and everything looks great. So if we want to take this 18-month cycle, right, somewhat similar to the market behavior we saw, uh, let's say, late 14, right, through kind of the election, what do you think is the next catalyst that could kind of move the market out of what Ultimately, it's, it's a wide trading range, but what has been something mm-hmm. like a trading range for the last 18 months? Now, Miles, that's a great point. You know, the S&P 500 went up a record nine consecutive years on a total return basis, right? And then we had last year. The economy was pretty good last year, yet stocks still dropped 6%. Now, we're, like you said, virtually gone nowhere since January 18th, if you look at the S&P 500, up a little bit. So in our view, hey, this big rally, now this really good sideways consolidation, what's going to drive us, though? It really is the fundamentals, right? We titled our mid-year outlook, Fundamental, how to focus on what really matters what really drives markets. In our opinion, you know, look at policy for a second. Yes, the Fed, they've pivoted. You go back in history when the Fed pivots, if you're not in a recession, then people have seen these numbers, markets tend to do pretty well. The big question I had is, can the Fed really cut rates with the S&P 500 up 15, 16% like it is right now? I went back to 1975, guys. I found 23 times the S&P was up 15% for the year and they cut. A year later, S&P's higher 20 times, up over 14% on average. So, you know, they can cut when the S&P is strong. It's because the economy is showing some signs of weakness. Again, 95 and 98 are the two times that really come in when it comes to policy. We had uh, concerns in 95, slowing economy. 98, long-term capital management fell apart. Russian ruble issues. Now we've got the China stuff. So the economy is not great. The Fed is still there. And earnings, again, as our opinion, what happened first quarter? Everyone got all bearish on earnings after the terrible fourth quarter. Earnings came in better than a lowered bar. We really think that can continue the second half of this year. Ryan, the big variable out there is the trade front. You uh, quickly Mm. mentioned that. It sounds like you're pretty bullish right now. So what do you think the likely scenario is, or how do you see the G20 meeting playing out between Trump and Xi? Yeah, we don't think at the G20 uh, later this week there's going to be a resolution with trade. It's just probably not going to happen yet. But we think a path to resolution is possible. But our stance is we think sometime this fall we probably can get some type of resolution on both sides. We're aware this has taken longer than most people expected, including us, where we sat about two months ago. But again, you know, getting geeky here for a second. Look at what stocks are doing. The NYSE advanced decline line. That's how many stocks are going up versus down. Made a new all-time high last week. You tend to see that peak out well ahead of overall 
overall major bear, uh, major bull markets, and then you get stocks that go down. So there's really broad participation. Doesn't mean you can't have a 10% correction, like, like you mentioned in the report earlier. We do think, you know, we've only had a 7% correction this year. 14% is the average correction. We think maybe a 10% correction could happen, but we would use it to go into those cyclical stocks, financials, industrials, technology. We really like emerging markets also. I know they've be beaten up a little bit. U.S. dollar sure looks toppy to us. The U.S. dollar starts to drift lower. That's going to be a big tailwind for emerging markets for a well-diversified portfolio to find some alpha uh, the rest of this year. Uh, Ryan Dietrich, LPL Financial Senior Market Strategist. Always good to talk to you. See you later. Thanks, guys. See you next time.